We're here today because we believe in education, not indoctrination. Teaching the facts will bring the country together, not divide the country. Thomas Jefferson, what do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Do we need more critical race theory if, that, if that's what it means, teaching the truth? We need more of that in schools. You're changing history, you're changing culture. This is a deliberate plan to politicize and whitewash history. You're teaching children to hate others because of their skin color. In the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits, and with the helmets, and with the baseball bats, you, got a, you had a lot of bad, you had a lot of bad people in the other group too. Eric Kirk. We say. Your time is up, thank you. Allow teachers to teach the truth. Allow teachers to teach the truth. Allow teachers Somebody to teach the truth. As a parent, have you ever questioned whether your children should be exposed to the difficult truths of our history? Like the horrors of slavery and the persistent issue of racism, you're not alone. Many parents share the same concerns, fearing that discussing these topics might shake their children's faith in the greatness of our nation. Likewise, some lawmakers argue against addressing systemic racism, believing it threatens the unity we hold dear. But beneath these debates lies an emotional undercurrent. Are we prepared to erase a significant part of our nation's history? The suffering and brutality endured by a group of people? Will we silence voices and suppress ideas like critical race theory that strive to illuminate our past? Join us as we embark on an emotional journey to explore these profound questions and confront the complex tapestry of our history. Welcome to Black History Diary. Today we explore the contentious subject of critical race theory and the concerns about its impact on erasing black history. In our upcoming discussion, we invite you to ponder is our national history a tool for fostering patriotism or a crucial lesson that confronts our complex collective past, embracing both its virtues and harsh realities? As we navigate this cultural background, we want your insights on the pivotal role understanding history holds in shaping our nation's future. In essence, this is a tale of the narratives molding our national identity. In recent years, Nationwide legislation has prohibited the teaching of CRT in schools. But before we delve into the implications of this action, let's explore the origins of CRT and its significance in preserving black history and identity. Critical race theory is not a novel concept. However, it has ignited fervent debates in recent years, mainly due to the adoption of state laws prohibiting its teaching in schools. It's important to note that contentious education policies and social movements aren't responding to new concerns, but are in fact rooted in age-old issues that have persisted across generations. These enduring challenges encompass issues such as housing segregation, discrimination, and repercussions of criminal justice policies, and the lasting impact of slavery in the United States. To comprehend the emergence of CRT and its transformation into a focal point of heated discussions, let's delve into its historical origins. In this story, we'll explore the impact of the pivotal legal and social reforms of that period. But did these reforms truly deliver what they promised? In the 1960s, the United States witnessed a series of pivotal legal and social reforms aimed at promoting civil rights and social justice. Key legislative acts included the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, and the Fair Housing Act. Supreme Court decisions like Brown v. Board of Education and Loving v. Virginia contributed to desegregation and the prohibition of interracial marriage bans. The era also saw the launch of great society programs addressing health care, education, and poverty. These reforms represented important steps towards greater equality and justice in the United States. However, for many, a sense of disillusionment began to dawn as they realized that, despite the profound legal challenges, significant improvements for marginalized communities still seemed agonizingly out of reach. The fundamental disparities persisted. For instance, a significant number of black men continued to find themselves entangled within the criminal justice system. What these perceptive individuals came to recognize was that the mere alteration of laws did not effectively alter the deeply ingrained mechanisms governing these systems. 
Critical race theory concluded that systemic racism was deeply ingrained in institutions, with the criminal justice system serving as an illustrative example. For instance, disparity in sentencing for crack cocaine compared to the powder form of the drug revealed a clear racial bias, as crack cocaine was associated with black individuals, leading to significantly harsher penalties for its possession. We are now catching up with the 1980s and early 1990s, a period when there was broad bipartisan support for the war on drugs and tougher crime laws. The rise of the Medellin cartel and the 1986 Anti-Drug Abuse Act under President Reagan marked a pivotal moment. This law pumped funds for prisons, drug education and treatment, but it also unleashed mandatory minimums and harsh sentencing requirements for crack cocaine. Fast forward to 1994, and witness President Clinton signed the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, a move that deepened its impact on African Americans with the three strikes laws and tougher penalties for young offenders. While these laws weren't necessarily fueled by overt racism, they were crafted by well-intentioned politicians striving to combat drug abuse and project a tough stance on crime for electoral reasons. However, the unintended consequence was unjust imprisonment of people of color, especially African-American men and boys. Mandatory minimums were significantly harsher for crack cocaine, more commonly used by African-Americans compared to powder cocaine, which was more commonly used by white individuals. Derrick Bell, a pivotal figure in the development of critical race theory, played a dual role as a civil rights lawyer with the NAACP and later as an academic. As his career advanced, Bell's perspective evolved. He started to doubt the impact of integration, a concept he initially championed in groundbreaking civil rights cases such as Brown versus Board of Education. Ultimately, Bell landed on the core concept that defined his academic work. Racism runs so deeply within the fabric of American society that it endures despite successive waves of reform efforts. This notion of racism's permanence laid the foundation for CRT. The theory gained prominence in the 1980s thanks to Bell, Kimberlé Crenshaw, and other legal scholars aiming to highlight racial inequality within critical studies. While CRT began as a legal theory, its impact extended beyond law, fostering a shift from inclusive to more anti-racist history. Amid ongoing national dialogue, a heated debate unfurled. The debate revolved around the question whether critical race theory should be banned from schools. Between 2010 and 2020 in America, there was a growing awareness of racism and the inclusion of critical race theory in educational settings. The decade saw an increased focus on addressing systemic racism and acknowledging the historical injustice that had long been overlooked in traditional curricula. While CRT itself was not widely taught in K-12 schools, the broader discussions around racial equality and justice found their way into the classroom. The Black Lives Matters movement, which gained momentum after the killing of Trayvon Martin in 2012 and later with the highlighted deaths of individuals like Michael Brown, Eric Gardner, and George Floyd, amplified the need to address racial issues. During this time, aimed to broaden the teaching of African American history, promote diversity, and foster inclusivity as well as a broader recognition of the enduring impact of racism in American society. This chapter kicked off with the New York Times groundbreaking release of the 1619 Project in 2019, a bold initiative to unveil the profound impact of slavery on American history. In response, several states moved to explicitly ban the 1619 Project, alleging it promoted the idea that the U.S. was inherently racist. Trump astutely recognized this issue gaining momentum among conservatives, leading to his announcement of the 1776 Commission on Constitution Day in 2020, with the aim of championing what he dubbed patriotic education. This move followed a key appearance on Tucker Carlson's show by Christopher Rufo, credited with catalyzing much of the backlash against CRT. Rufo argued that publicly funded institutions we're going too far with the inclusion efforts by teaching participants to apply CRT to their lives. After this, Trump's administration banned the use of CRT in federal offices, and the movement against CRT expanded its focus from corporate diversity training to the classroom. 
A closer look at the last six years in American history reveals that the election of Donald Trump in 2016 triggered a seismic shift in how the nation viewed race relations. This transformation, as articulated by Hartman, witnessed the Trumpist capture of the American right, effectively laying bare the racial fault lines in the heart of ongoing cultural wars. While racism had been compelled to recede underground in the post-civil rights movement era, Trump's presidency gave it new legitimacy in the public eye. His explicit endorsement of very fine people among the unrepentant white supremacists in the Charlottesville march left no room for ambiguity. Trump's abandonment of coded racial rhetoric led to a more unvarnished but also more acrimonious political discourse. This unsettling shift combined with mounting economic tension stemming from the aftermath of the 2008 recession created a potent cocktail for polarization within American political and culture life. The global pandemic further exacerbated this dynamic by compelling schools to shift to online learning, granting already stressed parents unprecedented access to their children's education. In this volatile mix, the stage was set for a resurgence of conflict regarding the teaching of K-12 American history. However, this time, the focus of the controversy was not on educational standards, but rather on critical race theory. In 2021, Senator Lena Tice made a significant legislative move in Michigan, known as Senate Bill 460. It aimed to remove the use of critical race theory and related approaches like the 1619 Project from K-12 curricula in the state. This bill sought to prohibit local school districts and public school academies from including these concepts in their educational materials, citing concerns that these approaches were promoting anti-American ideas. In 2022, Florida's House Bill 7 restricted how topics of race could be taught or discussed in schools. This bill removed concepts like intersectionality and systemic marginalization from the AP African American Studies course. It claimed that this decision may have been politically motivated, and it was a part of a broader pattern of whitewashing American history. These bills sparked a major debate in schools, White parents predominantly supported it. They believed that their children were too young to be taught ideas like racism, that CRT should be taught in law schools and not in grade schools. Senator Ted Cruz ignorantly claimed that critical race theory says every white person is a racist. Critical race theory says every white person is a racist. Slogans in protest across the cities claimed that our children should be protected from hateful ideologies. A little girl was seen holding a poster of, I'm not an oppressor. Another poster showed critical racist theory. In 2022, Governor DeSantis introduced the Stop Woke Act, aimed at addressing the presence of critical race theory in Florida's educational institutions. He emphasized the importance of maintaining a classroom environment free of divisive ideologies and stressed that educating children to harbor resentment towards their nation or fellow citizens should not receive taxpayer funding. In other words, let's not spend money to make Americans learn their true history and then feel bad about their sins of the past. Last April, Ron DeSantis signed the Stop Woke Act, which prohibits education that makes people feel anguish on the account of race, color, sex, or national origin. In other words, it's basically illegal now in Florida to make white people feel bad about slavery. On the other hand, black parents countered with the fact that if your child is too young to understand racism, my child is too young to experience it. Yet they do. Monica H., a black mother, while speaking to CNN, claimed that her child was in second grade at a school in Southwest Virginia when a white classmate called them the N-word. The white teacher did nothing to address the gravity of the racial slur, nor offered enough historical context to the students about why the word should not be used. The mother also made a poignant remark that children need to learn about racism so they don't repeat the wrongdoings of American history. The system employs various ways to prevent schools from teaching and celebrating diversity and inclusivity. An example is when a white mother in Virginia raised objections about a book, Out of Darkness, by Ashley Hope Perez. This was a historical novel depicting a relationship between a Mexican-American and black teenagers. The book discussed themes of sex, sexual abuse, and racism, and therefore faced conservative criticism, with some even labeling it as pornography. 
Following a request from school division administrator, the book was removed from high school libraries nationwide. Critics of CRT argue that it is divisive, promotes racial tensions, and fosters discrimination. Some Republican members of Congress have introduced a bill to restrict the inclusion of CRT in federal institutions, claiming that it hampers the promotion of civil rights and fosters division. However, disguised as a ban on critical race theory, the legislation effectively prevented teachers from addressing structural racism and white privilege. One of its key provisions prohibited educators from discussing the idea that an individual's race or gender could confer inherent privileges and the potential emotional consequences like discomfort, guilt, anguish, or psychological distress for marginalized individuals. The controversy surrounding teaching about racism stems from understandable concerns among parents. They fear their children might be taught that white individuals are inherently prejudiced. However, educating about racism doesn't necessarily convey this message. One can critically examine historical injustices without assigning personal blame. Consider Germany as an example. They include the Holocaust in their educational curriculum. However, young students in Germany don't relate themselves with Hitler. Germans understand that the purpose of learning from history is to evolve and do better. Critical race theory imagines that history is a history of struggle between a dominant majority race and a marginalized race or races. The marginalized races are oppressed by racial discrimination and must fight for advancement while the dominant majority race, whether intentionally or otherwise, seeks to preserve its power and privilege through racist oppression. This necessarily results in struggle and critical race theory hopes, liberation, and the transformation of society. When schools focus less on the history of other races, they may end up making it appear that everyone's experience is the same regardless of their race. The problem with such a discourse is that students of especially non-white races may begin to perceive that the tough history of their race is not getting the acknowledgement it deserves. CRT not only suggests looking at the inauthentic or missing stuff in school teachings, but also how some races are seen with a superior lens. Some people say racism persists because it helps people make money and capitalism must be opposed to combat it effectively. But not everyone agrees with that idea. Throughout US history, the subordination of black Americans has been perpetuated through propagation of scientific theories, such as intelligence testing, that rely on racial stereotypes about blacks, reinforcing their perceived appropriateness of their social condition. These stereotypes contribute to the maintenance of racial hierarchies and social injustices in our society. In the contemporary CRT culture war, race and culture are closely intertwined. The conservative anxiety linked to the culture wars is linked to the loss of a specific American culture, but in today's CRT conflict, it is both a racial and cultural dispute. Joe Olson's perspective shows that the loss of a particular white identity is central to this cultural struggle. The cultural wars concern whether the history of systemic racism can be taught in schools, making it a vital mix of white, conservative, cultural, economic, and racial anxiety. Diversity, equity, and inclusion has emerged as a critical and constructive path forward in the ongoing debate surrounding critical race theory in education. DENI is a comprehensive framework aimed at promoting fairness, representation, and a more inclusive society. It focuses on recognizing and celebrating diversity, addressing disparities in access and outcomes, and ensuring that all individuals are included and valued regardless of their racial, ethnic, or cultural backgrounds. It encourages a holistic perspective that takes into account various aspects of diversity, such as race, gender, sexuality, ability, and socioeconomic background. This approach emphasizes the importance of acknowledging and appreciating the unique experiences and challenges that individuals from different backgrounds face. CRT is occasionally criticized for its perceived divisiveness while DE&I strives to offer an education that is both impartial and inclusive. It allows educators to teach history, 
and social issues in a way that reflects a more accurate and diverse representation of society, avoiding an overly negative or divisive narrative. It encourages critical thinking and open dialogue. Instead of focusing solely on critical analysis, it promotes an environment where students can engage in thoughtful discussions about societal issues, including racial inequality. This approach allows students to form their own opinions and develop the skills to express them respectfully. It actively addresses disparities in access and outcomes, such as achievement gaps in education. It seeks to create equitable opportunities for all students and to reduce systemic inequalities. By focusing on addressing these disparities, DEI offers a pragmatic and proactive approach to creating a balanced educational system. It extends beyond the classroom and includes policies, practices, and hiring decisions within educational institutions. It emphasizes diversity and leadership roles, curriculum development, and teaching staff. This holistic approach can help ensure that diverse perspectives and experiences are represented throughout the educational system. While interviewing several black parents, E.D. Abraham Mock collected diverse insights on how black history must be taught. The teachers she interviewed reported that talking openly about sensitive issues helped learning. Prioritizing the validation of individuals' personal experiences and fostering productive dialogues over engaging in divisive debates can help educating better. These educators see history education as a means to instill empathy, enable students to connect with the past, nurture critical thinking, promote thoughtful discourse, and empower students to become responsible, informed citizens. And this is what DE&I is all about. The resistance to CRT education demonstrates a society at a crossroads, grappling with the tension between preserving a sense of national pride and the imperative to confront the uncomfortable realities of our history. CRT, despite its controversies, is a lens that demands a critical examination of systemic inequalities that persist to this day. While the debate continues, diversity, equity, and inclusion offer a pragmatic and inclusive way forward. By emphasizing inclusivity, education without bias, critical thinking, addressing disparities, and inclusive policies, DENI seeks to create a more authentic and respectful educational environment. This framework can help bridge the gap between the different perspectives on CRT and foster a harmonious and informed dialogue about how to improve historical education. The challenge extends beyond critical race theory. It revolves around our approach to our shared history. A crucial voyage that demands discomfort, introspection, and a collective endeavor to comprehend, rectify, and pave a path forward to a future grounded in inclusivity, comprehension, and authentic progress.